Uh, I thought our guys started the game with really good energy. I thought our guys started the second half with, with really good energy. That was a point of emphasis the last couple of days in practice was to start the half, the second half, um, in, a, in a good way on the defensive end. I thought we did that, but um, there was a you know significant part of the second half where we were obviously a step off, a step behind, um, you know, tried to get some different guys, some minutes, some opportunities, but, uh, you know, need to be better than we were in the second half. I think there was certainly some good things that a lot of our guys did that we can build on and, and improve. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we need to do better. So we'll look at that tape and um, certainly, I think for our individual guys, there's, there's a ton of stuff that, that we can show guys and improve on. Jeff, you can start us off. Hey, Shock, I got two questions. One, uh, especially in the first half, did you expect Sam Houston State to trap on the wings as much as they did? And, and how was that for your, your guys facing a, a defensive system where they were kind of forced to move the ball and, and not let it stick? Well, I knew it was just a matter of time before somebody played um, that action that way. That's, that's what I would do um, if someone did that to us. So, um, now there's a counter to that. You know, you can kind of slip out of it and, and, and like you said, move the ball, get it to the other side. When our guys did that, uh, it worked out really well. I thought the ball movement in the first half was, was, was pretty good. Um, you know, just had too many turnovers overall in both halves. But I thought one of the reasons that we got stagnant offensively in the second half is uh, the ball was sticking too much. The guys didn't move the ball as well. Brian, go ahead. Chuck, I wanted to ask you about Donovan. Um, from from the halftime in Lubbock, where he was where he was shut down, all the way to tonight, where he looked like I'm, I'm sure how he's wanted to look all along. How how would you describe that journey he's been on? Well, I mean, he obviously had surgery shortly after that, Brian. And uh, you know, the thing that he, uh, he deserves a lot of credit for is his knee. You know, he came in with with some knee challenges. So I mean, his whole freshman year. He was he did a really good job of just kind of battling through and um, you know playing through some some pain and some challenges and then in that tech game I didn't know it at the time but actually in warmups um, he he hurt his knee if you remember he missed a dunk in the first half of that game and I thought he heard it then but he had already heard it and then at halftime he you know he and Leif they just they said you know he's not going to be able to go so um, yeah. you know it's been a long journey for him. He's done a heck of a job with his rehab. You know, he's, he's one of those guys, sometimes you run into players that are just stubborn about wanting to kind of push the envelope and, um, you know, go further than maybe the doctors want him to go at that point. That was definitely him. But, you know, I give him a lot of credit for how hard he, he attacked it. Um, got cleared for live play right around when we started practice had to wear a brace. He didn't like the brace. That was kind of bothering him. So really the last two, three weeks is when he's, uh, you know, kind of been all the way uh, back. And even, I, I don't know what he told you, but he, he, he'll probably tell you he's not 100% yet, but he's feeling a lot better and he's moving better. And as a quick, quick follow-up to that, what do you envision uh, his role kind of being? Everybody on this team has a, has a kind of a role. What, what do you envision his? Well, we, you know, he's a guy that can score, um, but we need him to first and foremost be solid on defense, use his length. He's got really good length uh, and activity on defense, but then, you know, the, the solid part is, is where we got to keep working with him, where he's got to keep getting better. And, and then on the offensive end, you know, he's out there, let's say he's out there with, with Matt or Courtney or Andrew, two out of the three. Um, he doesn't necessarily have to, to create a ton. He's just got to be ready to finish the play uh, like he did on that baseline cut where he caught it and drew the foul. Um, and then he's, he's got to be ready when the ball comes to him to make uh, an open shot. That's something he spent a lot of time working on. Um, and then, you know, just from there, be, again, being as solid as he can. Dustin, go ahead. Yeah, Shaka, how do you approach talking to your guys about this one? On one hand, you're up by 27 with 11 minutes left, and then you're probably frustrated with the final 10-ish minutes of that game. How do you approach that conversation with these guys, knowing that you do have a lot of veterans? Well, I mean, the conversation is uh, first and foremost, 
I think making sure the guys understand the things we did that we set out to do. Uh, like I said, we had made a big deal out of starting the second half better than we have in, in some of our other games. Um, you know, we had made a big deal out of uh, getting our hands in the basketball. We had 36 deflections, which is a, is a terrific number, knowing that, you know, for a good eight, 10 minutes, we weren't as active and as good as we needed to be on defense. Our goal is always 32. Um, so, you, you know, you, you acknowledge those things that, that we did well, but then, um, you know, flat out not good enough, um, you know, to be our best in that last 10, 11 minutes of the game. And I think, you know, what happens a lot of times with players and some of our guys have been through this before is there's a, there's a sense of, yeah, we're probably going to win this game. Yeah, you know, we're, you know, we're kind of cruising right along, but the best teams, you know, they know how to finish, you know, they know how to step on the other team's throat. They know how to, uh, you know, do what it takes to just really, really finish the game the right way. Plus we're, we're trying to build habits. It's early in the year. So there'll be a lot of tape watched from that last 10, 11 minutes. Um, you know, Matt kind of looked at me after the game. He knew, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of things there that, that um, you know, we're going to make a big deal out of. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important for our guys to know how we put ourselves in a good position to be up 27 with 11 minutes left. And, and real quick, the, the transition offense, it seems like you guys have improved in terms of throwing the ball ahead. Is, is that what you're seeing that guys have a better understanding of? Don't dribble, dribble, dribble. Get that thing and throw it up the floor. Yeah, I mean, that's an emphasis. We talked about that in shooting around today. Uh, throwing it ahead, throwing it across the court. I think Matt and Courtney are doing a good job sharing it. Our guys are, you know, for the most part, running the floor well. We're better when we play fast and we get out ahead. Uh, and, and, and that kind of helps us, even if we don't score quick, get more pace in the half court. And, you know, I thought in the first half, we were really good with that. Uh, you know, second half, we got bogged down and that's why we didn't score as much. Got a few final questions in queue. Start with Cedric. Hey, Shaka, um, what boxes did you guys check in this first part of the season uh, that makes you feel good with conference play coming up? Um, boxes that we checked. Um, I think we've got, you know, we have some experience, Cedric, being a very, very good defensive team. Um, have some experience um, in, in quite a few stretches where we've you know, set our mind to saying, okay, we're going to defend these guys. We're going to be active. We're going to get our hands in the basketball. Uh, but we, we haven't checked the box of doing that all the time. Um, so it's, it's not like it's a fully checked box in terms of uh, having it all figured out there. Another box I, I, I think is uh, – you know, Greg Brown getting significant experience and, you know, learning some lessons through seven games, doing some good things, learning from some of those, uh, you know, doing some freshman things. You know, today he caught the ball, he jumped up and down and I don't know what happened, but, you know, hopefully, you know, you can learn from stuff like that um, just like you can learn from the good stuff. Uh, defensively, that's as important as anything. We do something with him called freshman remedial work after practice. Uh, he doesn't like it, but it's something we've always done with young guys. But there's the, the best work you can get is in the game. And so that's been an important box. And then I, I think seeing, uh, you know, some different combinations and how guys work well together. Um, I think Matt and Courtney, you know, playing well together, playing well off each other, uh, kind of sharing a leadership and um, that, that they've done a nice job of that. Now, obviously the competition level goes up from tonight to Sunday. Um, you know, we've played some really good teams to, to this point in the year, but you know, now we get into conference play and obviously the intensity always goes up there. Well, you had a uh, scoreless drought of about seven minutes in the second half. And at those times, it's, it's, it's really a luxury for good teams to have a big guy you can dump it into, get a cheap bucket, get some fouls drawn. Uh, that's where Jericho would come in. Uh, he had a couple of plays in the first half, but he didn't do much in the second half. And Matt says that he's got – it starts with him. Not Matt, it was Courtney who said it starts with him. Those guys, if they've been in his face, 
telling them how much you guys need him. Yes. Yeah, they, they, they've been pretty tough on him. And, um, you know, Jericho really responded uh, after – uh, after the Villanova game, you know, when he was challenged, uh, he, he, he had a couple of great days of practice. I thought he had more pop to him in the Texas State game. Uh, you know, didn't necessarily put up monstrous numbers, but I thought he was moving in the right direction and he was really in a good place going into Baylor. Obviously, that game got canceled. Um, you know, all I know with Jericho is, you know, we've got a continue to, you know, kind of prime him and get him as ready as, as he can be for the game, make it crystal clear for him uh, how we feel like he can be effective. And then, you know, his job is to, to when he gets the ball, go attack. Um, you know, we've been on him about not necessarily putting the ball down uh, to create like a perfect opportunity because that doesn't always happen. Sometimes catching it in what we call no dribble finishes, you know, just catching it and going up. Uh, so obviously that's an area where we got to keep working. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, Shaka, there was a little stretch in the first half where Andrew really looked like he was in a, in a good rhythm and a good zone and got to his spot a couple times, hit some, hit some uh, days, and he uh, dished a nice three to Courtney. Um, you know, what kind of progress is he, is he making off of sort of a slow start? And how important is it for you all to get that third playmaker, that third shot creator out there to help Courtney and Matt? It's really important because he's a better scorer than those guys uh, when he's, you know, when he's at his best. Uh, he's the best scorer on our team when, when, he, when he's at his best. But, um, you know, I agree. I, I, I think he looked really good on those, you know, a couple of plays. He got in the paint. He got to two feet really under control. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a healthy balance that, that we always want to encourage with a guy like him of – shooting open shots, which we love, and then also attacking, getting in the paint and creating, getting to the foul line or creating for other guys. I thought as a team, we had you know quite a few plays. Andrew had, certainly had a couple, but as a team where we got in the paint and um, you know there was defense that converged and, and we didn't necessarily find the right guy. Uh, so it's something we got to keep working on. Obviously 18 turnovers is too many. Where is Andrew? I, I, you know, I think he's making progress, you know, 13 points tonight. Uh, when you're a scorer, I mean, part of it is, you know, seeing the ball go in a little bit and feeling that rhythm. Um, so it was, it was certainly a step tonight. Uh, you know, I think he'll probably tell you he's, he wants to do even more and do better. And I, I think he will. Two last ones, Jeff, and then Mark. Hey, Shaka, kind of along the same lines of what you were just talking about, uh, is there a balance for you coaching your guys to, to be aggressive, you know, play with kind of that controlled violence and not, you know, getting the opponent in the bonus at the 10 minute mark in the first half and then sending the opponent to the line 29 times? Absolutely. I mean, that's our number one area for improvement. And, um, you know, we talked about it a lot coming out of Asheville. I thought we made some progress coming out of Asheville, but today what was a step back from the standpoint of just the number of fouls and like you said, the number of free throws. Um, you know, we want to be violent, but honestly, I don't think the majority of the fouls were, were even committed out of violence. I don't. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of our fouls, we had some over the backs, probably like three of those. Um, you know, you just got to be smart there. We had, you know, some offensive fouls, some charges. Um, you know, we got to be smart there. We got to understand when we drive, they're going to come in and try to take the charge. Something that we spent a lot of time on. Um, you know, when you get to the point in the game when you're up and if your focus gets a half step off, that's when you go make those plays. And it, again, it's just not, not acceptable. We got to get better at it. Um, but I think when we were flying around on defense and playing with toughness and a little bit of nastiness, you know, we might have fouled a few times with that, but I, I, I'll take that every day of the week. Um, the fouls, to me, occur more often if we're not in a stance, uh, for a step off, uh, if, we, if we give up an offensive rebound, those sorts of things, and those are areas where we got to get better. Last one. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, Shaka, Courtney is shooting the threes much more accurately this year than last. Uh, 
he says there's some discipline involved there for him. But uh, what do you see? I mean, he's always been a good shooter. He's definitely, like you said, shooting it better. Um, you know, Mark, we were on him last year about stepping into his shot left, right, um, because really statistically, if you take his freshman and his sophomore year, on just the, the shots he, he's taken where he steps in left foot then right foot, he's really shot it well, like 45%. And But when he steps in kind of awkwardly or two feet at once, uh, not shot it as well. Um, so he's gotten better with that. He worked a lot this summer on his footwork. But the one thing with Courtney is like, he's a maverick. I mean, he's not always gonna do everything exactly by the textbook. So, um, you know, I'm not even saying the five threes he made tonight were all left, right. Uh, but I, I do think he's shooting the ball with confidence. Uh, for the most part, he's taking really, really good shots, which contributes to making them. Um, and again, he's put in a lot of time. I mean, that kid, every day before practice, the whole preseason, I mean, every single day, he would get here about two or three hours early and then spend an hour in the gym on a shooting before we even started. And, and so I think that's paying off.